Hello game designers, um, this is going to be the first video on how to model a male, uh, the male reference. Again, um, there's no need to be perfect here, and uh, there is definitely more than one way to do it. It's just the way that I chose to do it. Okay, so um, let's talk about some couple settings before we begin. Um, I'm going to turn symmetry off because uh, I don't have anything symmetrical yet. Uh, I'm going to make sure that when I create things using uh, poly primitives, that I have um, interactive creation on. That makes it easier for me. Okay, and let's go ahead and begin. So again, I'm not going to go as in much detail as I did um, with the Homer example. If you went through the Homer example, this should be relatively redundant, but it does help you learn some of the nuances with modeling something that is more human-like. Okay, so I'm going to start off with making a cylinder, just like we did with Homer. I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, circle, and I'm going to pull it up. Okay. Now I'm going to use the channel box, and let's go ahead and make some of these values a little bit more useful. So I'm going to try a radius of 1, and um, I'm going to zero out the x, y, z. And I'm going to use the uh, W tool and go ahead and move this kind of up here. Again, you want below his shoulders. Um, but above, uh, below, like basically above his legs, but below his neck and shoulders. Um, so it looks like I can use a little more height here. Let's go to five. Let's go maybe up to six. Okay. Again, this is just a reference. Now you can obviously make your character with different curves, different dimensions, whatever you feel is going to fit your character. Okay. Now I'm <clears throat> kind of looking at the radius right now. My radius is probably a little bit too thick. Um, I usually want it thinner rather than larger because it's easier to expand than it is to um, it's easier to expand uh, than to uh, shrink. So I'm actually going to even make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to go about 0.7. Let's go point. Let's go point six. <clears throat> and point six looks a little bit better. And I'm using the side view to kind of give me an uh, idea of why I decided to uh, shrink it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started now. Um, let's go ahead and um, leave this at 0.6. Let's go ahead and change the number of subdivisions. Again, um, the rule is try to use multiples of six. Um, so I'm going to use 12 subdivision axes and 12 height division um, subdivisions. Um, this is similar to our Homer case here, and I'm going to start just like I did with Homer. Okay, so I'm going to kind of zoom in on the bottom part and work my way up here. I'm going to um, go to the vertex, and I'm going to select the vertex on the bottom. I want to make sure that right now you see these yellow lines. That means you have soft select on. I'm going to hit B again to turn soft select off, and I'm going to go ahead and um, start scaling. So I'm going to go ahead and click on probably a little bit too high. I'm actually going to change my mind. Move it up a little bit here. Move it up. <coughs> um, and use my R tool. Now, when you use the R tool, when you're using someone that's not cylindrical as Homer, you're going to use it in both dimensions. So in this case, I'm going to expand the yellow one, but I'm going to keep an eye on when I first get too big. So I'm looking right here. This is touching my buttocks now, and that's kind of like where I want to stop. Okay, and now I can go and now change just the vertical direction. I'm sorry, the horizontal direction with the red axes and kind of make it as big as my hips. Okay, and that's about it. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this again row by row. Um, I can move it if I decide to, kind of move it up. Um, and now I'm going to use the R tool and I'm going to stretch, stretch out and I'm going to, when I hit something, either the front, back or left and right, I'm going to stop. So here I'm look like I'm going to hit the front here and it looks like about the front and the back, very similar time here. So maybe just a little bit smaller because I can always change the curves later. Now I'm going to use the red axes and kind of get it as wide as my hips here. I'm going to take this one. It uh, looks like I'm going to move it up just a tad bit here. And, <clears throat> and again, I'm going to use the R tool, kind of scale outward, and kind of 
you kind of have to, for the model, kind of ignore where the hands are here. So this is kind of like where his curves are here. And um, again, don't worry about if the the backside, for example, isn't far enough. As long as one of these sides stop, this is where you should stop. And over here, we're going to use soft select to kind of pull out the, for the rest of his curves. So now I'm going to use the R tool and make sure I'm stretched enough around. And you kind of use this top view here and kind of see what you're making. And you're sort of making right now these oval rings. Okay. So I'm going to click on this one. Again, I'm going to use the R tool. It's already selected. I'm going to kind of enlarge it until I hit either the back, front, or sides. It looks like right here I'm already hitting the back side. The front side isn't quite. Um, the sides are definitely not long enough. So I'm going to kind of extend it this way to kind of meet his hips here. Okay. I'm going to kind of zoom up now. I'm going to hit the next set of rows. Again, I'm going to um, maybe well, I want to zoom in here, frame it here. Ah, so you can see right here, we're going to hit the back side pretty quickly here. So I'm already hitting his back. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to move to this tool and kind of go horizontally or side to side. Click the next set of uh, vertices, the next ring. I'm already hitting the back right here. So I'm going to go ahead and move the front. Hit the next set of rows. <clears throat> going to move it back. You can see right here that I already hit this the back side. I'm going to move it kind of oval right here. <clears throat> I'm going to keep going. Hit the next set of rows. Kind of hit its back right here. Leave the front out. And we'll, we'll use uh, move tools to kind of work on that later. Okay. Kind of stretch it out there. <clears throat> I move on going to the chest area here. Um, I'm going to reframe it over here as well. Okay. I'm going to move it out until I hit kind of either the back or the front here. So I hit the back first, the front I can pull later. I'm going to pull out his sides here, kind of make his shape. And again, you don't have to follow this reference exactly. This is just a reference. You can make him with different curves, um, whatever you feel comfortable with, and matching the model that you're going to produce. So you can see here, I kind of hit the front side of his pecs, <coughs> and not quite the back side yet. So now I'm going to pull over his sides. I'm going to hit the next set of rows, kind of pull out hit the front of his chest. I'll pull out the back later. Um, pull these to kind of meet the sides here. And kind of remember, you're, you're kind of making uh, shoulders. So you're not going to quite go all the way up. I'm kind of looking at this now. Maybe I'm going to pull this in just a tad bit. Make it look a little more straight there. <coughs> go in here. Again, pull it out to as far as you're going to reach um, some part of the body. I'm going to hit the front side of his body. I'm going to pull the back out later. I'm going to make an pull out his chest and I'm going to uh, go the last set of rows here and um, you can see that I'm already kind of too big so I'm going to kind of pull this in a little bit so that it curves with his chest I'm going to pull out here and kind of create the width of his shoulders and we're going to extrude his shoulders a little bit later okay uh, so we kind of got our initial shape of his body Obviously, we didn't. We need to have pull out more of his back. We need to pull out more of his abs. Um, looks like a little bit more for his buttocks. Um, maybe a little more forward for his crotch. So let's kind of work. Uh, let's kind of work our way down. Uh, start down and work our way up. Um, so um, you can sort of see here. We may have to pull the front side of his crotch a little bit here. So I'm going to use the move tool, and I'm going to use B and hold it down and kind of select the area that I want to pull. So I'm going to pull right here and I'm going to pull out a little bit. And if you don't like the way it is, you know, um, extruding, I'm sorry, uh, soft selecting and moving, maybe you need to adjust. So I think I want to put maybe a little bit bigger circle here. And it looks like I, yep, I got a more of the pull that I want. Okay. So I'm going to go on to the next section here and you can see, um, that I kind of need to pull this entire part up, right? And when you have this big of a gap you want to fill, you want to start somewhere in the middle of this gap. So I'm going to pull kind of in the center. The center is probably this point right here. And I'm going to make B very large, okay? So I'm going to pull. You can see it's pulling just about what I want. Maybe I need to pull a little bit less. So I'm going to kind of control Z here and make B just a tad bit smaller. Okay, 
and now kind of pull it up there and yeah I kind of get what I want now again it's no perfect formula for how much to pull how little to pull and again you can do it in multiple pulls so you can see here I'm still missing a little bit of his chest a little bit of his abs I'm gonna pull just a little bit here and pull a little bit here and actually um, this is kind of a good time where when you start moving up to his pecs it's not a pull in the center but a pull more around his pecs the center of his pecs so especially when it gets to this area right here let's go ahead and make sure that under modeling tool that we turn symmetry on okay so now if I pull one pec I'm gonna pull both the pecs so you can see here I selected this point <coughs> and maybe this point right here is still kinda centered so maybe this is not quite his pec yet so I can kinda pull the center here pull it out just a little bit there and maybe what I want to do is go ahead and push in this chest right here push in the solar plex and then click in on his actual center of his pecs and pull out okay and if you can look right here on the top view you can see that I have kind of pecs here right I have a solar plex right here and his center of his pecs pull out here and that kind of gives you um, the kind of look that you want now maybe even more I can go to his abs he looks like a guy that has kind of a six-pack I'm gonna kind of go to the center here and kind of push inward okay and maybe go to his muscles right here maybe a little bit too high just go right there and kind of pull these out to kind of give the uh, the vision or the look of a um, uh, some abs Okay, so kind of push in the center again, but kind of push out the uh, the side muscles here. Okay, and you kind of look here in the um, the top view, you can kind of see now that we're forming kind of a, a chest line here. So maybe if I want to, I can go ahead and click uh, three and kind of look at this in smooth view form. Okay, kind of has pecs right here. Okay, and let's go ahead and click one and go back to our poly view and see what else we need to do. So um, the next thing we need to work on is kind of the backside here. So this is kind of like the center of his buttocks. We're gonna do a pull and to see if we like what we see. So yeah, um, it looks like we're getting a good pull here. Um, now for the backside, you're gonna have to use perspective view. And maybe I actually kind of overdid it. Maybe I'm gonna push it back in a little bit here in the center but I'm actually gonna click on each the right or left buttocks and uh, pull it out there so that we actually have some curves around his buttocks now um, let's see if I can get a better view of this go ahead and click on three and let's see if I have more definition it doesn't look like I have much definition so I'm gonna control or I'm gonna go back to uh, one go back to poly view and I'm actually gonna click uh, in between his buttocks which is probably right here and I'm gonna lower down the uh, the soft select I'm just gonna push in and give himself a butt crack so that now we have a more defined um, buttocks okay so I'm gonna click B uh, I'm gonna hold down B and make it large again kind of push out his butt just a tad bit to give definition now let's go ahead and click on three again and kind of look at the smooth view and see if <clears throat> we're giving him enough of a buttocks. So uh, um, let's go ahead and scroll down here and uh, kind of look at the backside. And maybe I'm going to click here. And I'm, again, I'm going to use a lower B for the um, butt crack. And I'm going to push it in a little bit more. Push that a little bit more in. Give it some definition. I'm gonna push this a little bit more in. And maybe one more right there. Push it in a little bit. Okay. Okay. And now I'm starting to get a feeling of um, a buttocks here. So there's the back spine that looks a little bit too uh, uh, not enough for the reference. So again, um, especially with these type of things, you want to click on the center one. So I'm gonna click on that one right there. And I'm gonna check my B range, probably a little bit more. 
So maybe about that much, and I'm going to push it out. Okay. So I'm going to work my way back up now. So the chest looks almost ready to go. So um, I'm going to work on now is the uh, the back hair. So I'm going to move this entire back kind of that way. And this two points that seem to be the center is either this one or this one. So let's just start with this one. I'm going to increase the B to kind of reach his entire back here. And I kind of use the top view to kind of get a view of how many vertices I'm kind of pulling here. So I'm going to kind of pull outward there. And now I'm going to click on this vertice, pull that a little outward. Click on this vertice, pull that a little outward. Maybe pull that one a little more inward, that one a little more outward. This one a little more inward. Back to this one a little more outward. <clears throat> So you can also look from the top view that my back is starting to look like he has too much of a spine. So um, I'm actually gonna click on these right here and give these a little bit more of a pull back here and add that little shoulder blade. Give him a little bit more definition around his shoulder blade area here. Pull that out a little bit. So make his back look a little bit more. And actually spines kind of go inward. So I'm actually gonna kind of um, lower down the spine here. Lower down my soft select and kind of push back on the spine. Because actually the thing that sticks out the most is probably gonna be his shoulder blades. So I'm gonna push out his shoulder blade here and I'm gonna click on these two. Top of his shoulder blade kind of go out there. And um, now I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to start putting in his shoulder and neck. Uh, and let's kind of look at our view and it looks like we got some good curves here. So. Um, I'm going to turn off soft select. I'm going to click B. I'm going to click on these points right here. And I'm just going to first click on the very top point. So the point in the center. And I'm just going to pull it really, really up. Okay. Because it's not going to matter. I'm going to delete these faces anyway. So I just want to make sure that I don't click on it when I click on this ring here. And uh, I'm going to adjust this ring a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and frame this ring here. Frame this ring here. And um, let's go ahead and fix this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to scale it up just a tad bit. Get it right there. And again, I don't really want the shoulders quite yet. Um, so actually, I'm probably going to move it down. I'm going to hit W. Move it down a little bit to where I'm, I want to create this shoulder. So I'm going to move it just about here. Okay. And... Um, Yeah, and let's go ahead and start extruding. So uh, I'm actually going to take that back. I'm going to take this face, or uh, this one vertice, and I'm going to move it down a little bit here. And make sure we go to vertex mode again. Um, so uh, I'm going to go on hit number one to go to vertex mode. I'm going to go here, and I'm actually going to click on all these faces. So I'm going to use um, there's a couple ways you can do this, but the best way I like to do it to select all these faces instead of like, uh, just go ahead and just do it. We're going to go ahead and click on face select now. And I'm going to click on each face. OK. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and use the extrusion tool. Um, but this is going to extrude probably outward. This is not going to be good. Um, before I extrude, let's go ahead and actually move this one vertice back down. Because what's going to happen is if I extrude, it's going to make the face look relatively um, kind of outward. I don't want that. So I'm going to go back over here. And actually, I need to fix some of these symmetries on the side. So actually, I'm going to click this entire ring. Um, I'm going to use R tool and bring it down a little bit because it doesn't look right. OK. That's looking a little bit better. <coughs> OK. All right. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and click on the face tool. And I'm just going to um, go ahead and click on these individual faces. And I'm going to hit uh, Control E to extrude. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude upward. And I'm going to extrude upward. And I'm going to actually use the R tool and really bring it down. Now, this is when you want to turn symmetry off because you're dealing with the entire ring. Go ahead and scale it down. Click on all these vertices again. 
Okay, make sure to um, re-click on these vertices, make sure your symmetry is off, so that's nice and centered. And I'm gonna center and go ahead and pull in for the shoulders. So you really wanna pull it down to about his neck. And um, I'm gonna kind of move it up here. So I'm using the side view right now. Kind of look at the side view, go about yay high. And I'm going to use the R tool, scale back out a little bit here. Okay, and you can see that I'm going to have to scale it to two points here. So I'm going to scale it this way, and then I'm going to scale it this way. Okay, and now I can go ahead and fix this ring now. This ring, I'm, I'm good on this scale, but I'm not good on this scale. So I'm going to scale it out like that. Okay, so again, when you're dealing with objects that are more humanoid, you want to make sure that you're scaling, you're looking at the side views and the front view kind of simultaneously and making sure that you're meeting the width and the depth that you want. Okay, so now we kind of got the shoulders now, kind of inward. <clears throat> and the last part is going to head and make a neck for this person. Uh, so um, actually his shoulders kind of have this web here. So if you're using the reference kind of um, to the teeth, you might actually want to use W and move this higher, kind of up to his neck, and then use R to scale down to his actual neck. So if you want to be precise, ah, maybe a little bit lower here, his shoulders kind of end right here. Okay. <clears throat> and again, we can always, you know, do some soft select and move some of these to later match out uh, these geometry a little bit better but we have a rough idea of his shoulders. Um, so I'm just gonna fix some of these vertices real quickly. I'm gonna go to vertex mode and you can kind of see the way the neck is being created right now. It's kind of going along too much of that uh, solar flex look. So I'm gonna move out of this one right here. Kind of found a more rounder neck here. And maybe this chest point is too inward here. So I can kind of fix it. Not too much of a solar flex. When you get to about here, your collarbone, okay? All right, so now I'm going to go back and go ahead and click on the individual faces. So, so I'm going to extrude one more time. So this is his shoulders, and now I'm going to extrude for his neck. So I'm going to click around here. And the best way to do it is uh, either using the shift tool, just shift click all these uh, faces to extrude, or you can actually turn camera base selection on and then kind of highlight all these eight and, and select those. So actually I'm going to show you both. So here I selected with using the shift button. I'm going to unselect it. If you turn uh, your camera base selection on, you can go ahead and select these, and it won't select anything behind these if you use camera base selection. Now, the problem with this tool, though, is that um, you need to make, remind yourself to turn it off once you are done. Okay? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and now extrude by using Control E, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude it upward. And again, if you remember the Homer example, we're going to take this ring and we're going to uh, go ahead and scale it however we need. Um, we're going to rotate it kind of forward, kind of create that neckline. Okay. And maybe W to kind of move it where we want. Okay. So something like that to center it. I'm going to scale it out a little bit. And now I have a neck. And now this kind of gives me an idea that my other ring is not going to be good enough. So I'm going to go back into vertice mode and go ahead and click on this ring right here. And maybe I'm going to need to rotate this as well. So I'm going to um, first scale it out and then maybe a slight rotation. Okay, something like that. And let's go ahead and preview, uh, oops, I think I made a couple mistakes here because I can tell that I ruined symmetry. Make sure that uh, when you're uh, selecting uh, camera-based selection, you, that you turn it off. So here's another word of advice. When I turn camera-based selection and I wanna click the entire ring, I gotta make sure I turn it off. Otherwise, um, it isn't good. Actually, I think I scaled incorrectly too. I scaled the neck a little bit too big. So let's go ahead and go back a little bit. I think I made a mistake probably on the scale right here. So um, on this view, it looks fine. But on this view, you can see that the ring that I selected here is too wide. So I'm going to use the R tool again. 
I'm going to scale down right here so that this is properly around his neck and that this is properly around his neck. Okay, there we go. So now I fixed the top ring. Let's go and fix back the, um, the second ring here. Again, I'm going to uh, scale not too wide here, maybe a little bit wider here. I'm going to kind of use a rotate tool, rotate it just a little bit to kind of match the symmetry of his neck. And I can, I'm checking both perspectives now, making it back, front, and side to side. And it looks pretty good. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, be done with that. Um, I can kind of see that this ring right here, my third ring, is kind of too low. I'm going to go ahead and use the move tool and move it up a little bit higher. So that kind of meets his shoulder right there. And uh, yeah, now it's looking better. Now kind of let's use our perspective view here. He has some shoulder blades. He has a uh, a buttocks except for looks like we have one vertice too much here. I'm gonna pull this vertice um, <clears throat> inward. Looks like the only one I have to pull. So let's go ahead and frame this vertice down here. And I'm gonna move it inward here. Okay. So yeah, he has a buttocks. He has some hips, he has some shoulder blades at the front, he has some pecs. Um, you can go ahead and, you know, if you really want to make him muscular, you can add more edge rings and um, edge loops and kind of give him more definition, but this is fine with me. I'm just going to click on three, I'm sorry, I want to click on three, not E, and kind of look at it on uh, smooth edge mode and kind of see what I got going on. Yeah, I'm not too happy with his chest. I think he's a more muscular looking fella. So I'm gonna actually go back and just do a quick couple of uh, additions. So again, um, when you're working with pecs, make sure that you're turning symmetry back on to object X. And now you, you have both pecs selected. Um, this is kind of like, I think the center of his pecs. I'm gonna go ahead and click B and kind of really give him a large radius here. <coughs> And I'm going to move it outward. Go ahead and click on uh, W. And I'm going to move it um, forward. So I'm going to use my side view here. And really give him that muscular looking chest. There we go. Ah, so that looks good. And now it looks like I'm just going to kind of go into his solar plex here. And really narrow down his solar plex. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to get rid of B for a minute. I'm going to click on these three points. Or just click on here. So I'm just going to make B a little bit smaller. So I only affect kind of his solar plex middle point here and push it in. Okay. And I'm going to click here. I can kind of look at the top view. That's kind of too high. Kind of pull that in. And maybe uh, looks like no, that looks about right. Okay, so let's see in smooth view using my perspective view, and that looks like more definition right there. I actually see that he has a <clears throat> kind of a increased chest here. Maybe maybe if I select this point, go out a little bit more, and maybe this point go a little bit more. Go to his solar plex, push it in a little bit. And now we have some more definition. Okay. All right. And that does it for uh, the torso for um, the male reference. Okay. And we will continue probably with the arm sockets next and the arms um, for the next video.